Hello, everyone. We are uh, really happy to welcome you to the NMAT online seminar where you can uh, learn useful tips to successfully complete the exam. My name is Timmy. I will be your moderator for today. Now, uh, let's talk about today's session a bit. First, we are going to hear Matt Jensen, the Director of International Student Recruitment and Admissions here at Corvinus. Uh, he will give us a brief introduction to the webinar and then uh, Sweb Teotia, uh, the associate di director at uh, NMAT, will talk us through the process of NMAT exam itself. Feel free to ask uh, any question throughout uh, the presentations, because at the end of the webinar, our speakers will try their best to answer all of your questions if uh, we have time. And uh, now I'm going to give the word to Matt. Matt, the stage is yours. Thank you, Timmy. So hi to everybody. I want to say good afternoon because there could be people from all over the world joining us. Um, today we're going to talk about the NMAT exam. As Timmy said, I'm the Director of International Student Recruitment and Admissions here at Corvinus. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about the processes for Hungarian students as well, but my my specialist area is obviously the, the international with, with my job title, but I, we should be able to answer everything. Uh, that everybody needs to know. To start with, I'm going to talk a little bit about Corvinus. So some of you might have joined us already for the session that we did earlier this week, <clears throat> excuse me, that was uh, on the GMAT. Uh, today is about the NMAT. So if you've already uh, seen this content from, from Monday's session, apologies. Uh, there could be some new people joining today. So we, we quickly go through this. I know that some of you might already have applied to Corvinus, uh, but this, this content is for uh, people who are thinking about an, making an application to us in particular. So about the university and, and why you should choose this university. Well, first, we're a medium-sized university. We have around 11,000 students, and a large number of those students are international, so about 15%. That's almost 2,000 of our students that are international. And if you study on an English language program, so we offer programs in Hungarian and in English, but if you study on an English language program, you might find that 50% of your class, even more, uh, are not Hungarian. And our students come from more than 80 different nationalities. So if you look today, um, people who are commenting on the event, you'll probably see some names from all different parts of the world. Uh, it's a good... Um, indicator of, of where many of our students are coming from but really we have have global exposure and and you will have if you become a Corvina student you'll have the opportunity to to really meet with people from all over the world the university has more than 120 years of history so i'm jumping now to the the second last point on the on the screen uh, we we have a blend of um tradition so the university is very, very well established in Hungary. A lot of the, the key decision makers in Hungary, business owners, politicians, etc., very influential people in Hungarian society are, are alumni. Uh, so the university has a very, very strong brand. For those of you from outside of Hungary, uh, the name Corvinus is, is a Hungarian king. His name was Matthias. I'm Matt. There might be a connection. Who knows? Um, but uh, Matthias Corvinus was um, the king during a golden era for Hungary, and he was a, a great reformer, and uh, the university is named in his, his honour. We also have a brand new campus being built on the Buddha side of the, the city in, in Gelet, and that's opening next week, I think. This, this month, for sure, we have the opening ceremony. Uh, so it's very, very exciting, Corvinus, having this strong tradition, uh, but also having these new state-of-the-art learning facilities as well, which many of you will be able to benefit from from next year. The university is a specialist in three subject areas, so business management, economics, and social sciences. I've shared the QS World Rankings here on the screen. It's really, really a fantastic value proposition. So the university, in, in my mind, offers one of the best education uh, experiences you can get in these subject areas in English. Um, there is such a high quality 
Yeah, if, if you go and look at other universities that are in the top 350 in the world for business and management, can you study at those universities for six six thousand uh, euros per year as an international student? I, I don't think so. Um, so really, it's an outstanding opportunity that we offer here at Core Venus, and it's very accessible for for many people. Please look into these other acronyms you can see on the screen. So AMBA, AACSB and SEMS. You'll see that only 2% of business institutions in the world are AMBA and AACSB accredited. So we're very proud of this. It's something that's going to give you a, a real edge in the, the labor market when you graduate, but it also enhances your learning experience. And uh, SEMS is also another very prestigious global network. And you have an opportunity if you study certain master's programs to do an exchange uh, within the SEMS partner network. You can see there's some top, top business schools in this network. And alongside that, we do have additional study abroad opportunities as well with more than 200 international partners. This is for our Hungarian students and for our international self-funded students. So those of you on Stipendium Hung Hungaricum scholarships, you'll stay in Hungary during your studies. That's one of the conditions of, of their scholarship. Programs that we have available. So this session is targeted at people who would be taking the NMAT. Why would you need to take the NMAT? Um, it's to gain ad admission to one of our master's programs. And, and pretty much this is a requirement for everybody, whether you're, you're Hungarian, you're international. Uh, if you're applying for a master's at Corvinus, one of these programs, then you will need to do Okay, there's three exams that you can choose from, the GMATs, the session that we've done on Monday, uh, the MMAT, the session that we, we do today, or uh, GRE, the, the rival company, ETS, um, to GMAC, the, the company that my colleagues uh, work for, uh, who are here today. But you have to do one of these, these three, and I'm going to talk through what the exemptions are. So you can see the programs. We have mainly two-year master's degrees and their their business related but also we have in economics various options some hybrid programs for example health policy planning and financing uh, we've got social sciences as well you can see the communications international relations and sociology so subjects in these these strengths that i mentioned on the previous slide what are the entry requirements so everybody needs to have a bachelor degree and in Hungary, your bachelor degree has to have some minimum credits related to the master's program that you're applying to. So it can be problematic if you've studied psychology, for example, to go and do a master's in, in business. You normally have to have studied some business related content in your bachelor's. It doesn't mean that the whole program needs to be the same major, but you have to have some credits. And you can see on the, the website what those credits are. They vary from program to, to program. So please do this research before you, you apply for a master's at Core Venus. And you should have one of these three international exams that I've talked about. And you have to provide them before the deadline, which we'll cover on the next slide. Today, we're here to talk about the NMAT specifically, and I really really recommends the, the NMAT to you. Swapna will talk about it further. Uh, the reason that I recommend the NMAT to you is it is the most affordable option that's, that's available and it's considerably more, more affordable than any of the other options. So do, do look at this. Um, Content-wise, I wouldn't say one is easier than the other when we're looking at the GMAT, the NMAT and the GRE, but uh, you might find that there's fewer elements in the, the NMAT test as well. Uh, so it could, if you prepare well for it, it could be a, a good chance for you to score high. Once you take one of these papers, so you have to meet the minimum score requirements. So if you don't have, if you take the NMAT and you don't have a score of 165, you're not going to be admitted to Corvinus. We'll convert this into a percentage score. In that case, 165 is equivalent to 65% for international students at least. And if you don't meet that score, you can't proceed in the admissions process. It's, it's that simple. 
For Hungarian students, uh, your admission score also has an extra 10%, not just coming from the, the NMAT paper or any of these other exams, but also from your extracurricular activities. So things like sports and, and charity work. If you've already studied in Hungary, you'll be familiar with the Felvi process a little bit and how the, how the point system works. And it's not so different for masters to what it is for, for bachelor admission. Okay, and then uh, people that score between 65 and 74%, so when we convert the, the NMAT score into a percentage, you have the chance to do an interview, potentially, depends which program you apply to. So not all of these programs have this opportunity. Uh, there's about five, six of them, I think, where this is, this is an option to you. Otherwise, the, the dean is going to set a points threshold so I, I think it will typically be about 75, 80%, maybe 85%, something in this area. So you need to focus on not just scoring the minimum in the MAP, but scoring well beyond uh, the, the 165. So you can get the best possible percentage score and give yourself the best possible chance of admission. Because if you're, you're not above the threshold, the percentage threshold that the dean sets, you won't be accepted. So I hope that's all clear. Another important point is that there's no additional English language requirements. So you don't need to have an IELTS, a TOEFL, a TOEIC, Duolingo. We assess everything from your GMAT and MAT GRE score. Okay, and then any other documents that are listed, so things like passport or ID. You'll see when you do an online application, international students in particular, um, you'll see what you need to upload. Exemptions. So I did this slide or a very similar slide on Monday and it caused complete confusion with people there. So I want to try and make it clearer. Exemptions. If you're an international student, 99.9% .9 chance you will not be exempt. Yeah, so there's no way around uh, most people having to, to not take one of these tests. Okay, so keep in mind, this probably won't apply to you, probably won't. A lot of Hungarian students, it also won't apply to because there's very few accredited universities in, in Hungary as well. So you are only exempt from taking the GMAT, the MAT, or the GRE. These very, very rare circumstances, the 0.01% of you, you're only exempt if both of these factors apply, that you've graduated from an accredited university. Accredited means AACSB. I mentioned earlier that Corvinus is AACSB accredited. An Equus accredited university uh, or an EFMD accredited program. There are three EFMD accredited programs in Hungary offering business management bachelors or an EAPAA accredited uh, program or faculty. <clears throat> it's very, very important that uh, your school, so sometimes only the business school will be accredited, not the whole university. So it's very important that the, the faculty, the business school is, is accredited or the whole university and, and that you've studied in that right faculty. So if you studied in the social science faculty and only the business school is accredited, you won't meet this requirement. OK, so that's that's one point to note. There's also a lot of member universities. Member universities are not accredited universities. So you can be an AACSB member, but it's different from being AACSB accredited. So make sure that your university is accredited. OK, this next point only applies if your university is accredited. So you alongside being from an accredited university, you have to have an average grade equivalent to B or higher. So this is a 4.0 out of 5 GPA or 80% or higher. Okay, this point does not apply if you didn't graduate from an accredited university. So many people on Monday were asking me, do I have a or messaging in the chat? Uh, does my grade count as a B? It doesn't have any relevance to this particular factor. You still have to do the GMAT, MAT or GRE if your university is not accredited. So I hope that we made that, that clearer uh, this time. Another point for international students, you have to already have graduated because you'll need an admission score earlier in the cycle. And uh, 
we don't know if you have a final grade of B or above until you graduate. Okay, so it's still a, a working GPA until you actually graduate. Okay, um, so the hope that's clear on exemptions. Why do we use standardized testing? So by standardized testing, we mean the, mean the, the GMAT, the GRE, or the NMAT. We need, mean, mean these three international papers that we're asking you to, to take. Well, first, the best students in Hungary tend to choose, and the, the, the top students that want to apply to study at, in, in Hungary choose Corvinus, particularly if they're business students or economics or social science students. Corvinus is the first university to introduce this, this requirement. Okay, so we're, we're leading the way. And um, I believe that other universities would follow, particularly universities offering business, uh, economic, social science related programs. The reason we do this is that the requirements are the same for everybody. So it doesn't matter yeah, the education system, uh, let's say, in Central Asia can be quite different to the education system here in Europe. But these international tests are designed to make it fairer so there won't be those discrepancies don't, don't manifest. So it gives you the same chance. Yeah, people might speak English with a different accent. Somebody who speaks English very well might be discriminated by an interviewer who doesn't understand their accent, but it doesn't mean that they don't speak English well. Uh, so... This standardized testing makes it much fairer for everybody and it makes it more accessible for everybody. And it allows us as a university to select the best students and it allows you as a student, if you're admitted, to be in the classroom with the best students. And that's what you'll see. Yeah, so you'll see the top, the top people in Hungary, certainly Hungarian students, the top Hungarian students choose Corvinus time and time again. This is reflected in the, in the point scores that are needed to be admitted to the university. And more and more international students want to get into Corvinus every year. International students who choose other Hungarian universities always try to transfer to Corvinus uh, because they realize that it is the, the best place to study these, these programs. Another point is that doing these tests now could be very useful later in life. So when when you apply to work at multinational companies, as many of you will, they often use IQ testing to select their, their new employees. So what you would do in the NMAP can be very, very similar to what you would do in an IQ test to work for a big four company. And uh, Corvinus students who graduate so it can be harder to get onto a program at Corvinus, but if you're in, if you study hard, when you graduate, if you stay in Hungary, you'll have the best professional opportunities of any Hungarian students. So it's a fact, it's proven by data, that our graduates will earn 60% higher seven years after they finish the program. So if you study business management at Corvinus compared to University X, I won't pick on any other Hungarian universities by naming them, the Corvinus graduate will earn 60% higher statistically than the University X student seven years after they finish the program. It's a huge um, difference that a Corvinus degree makes. That's the reputation that the university has. That's the quality of the education that you get from us. For you Hungarian students, uh, there's also the Corvinus scholarship that's available, um, which can potentially give you free free tuition for the preceding semester, subject to grades you maintain, you have to select A in your file v.2 application as your funding option to apply for this, this opportunity. Okay, application process, uh, I'll go through this as quickly as I can, and then I've got one more slide and then I, I hand over to Swapnil. So it's a bit different if you're an international scholarship applicant to a self-funded applicant. So scholarship applicants, you have to already have applied. This is the top line of the three uh, process diagrams you can see on the screen. So you'll find out if you've been nominated by March, uh, if, you've, if you're a scholarship applicant, statistically around 15% of our applicants are nominated. So uh, sadly, not everyone will, will be nominated. But you have to start preparing before March 
because uh, it take, can take at least six weeks. Swapna will give you more precise advice, I think. Uh, but <clears throat> we'd say at least six weeks to prepare well for the NMAT, uh, which means you have to you have to provide it by the 1st of April. So you have to start preparing right now, yesterday, uh, to, to ace this exam and score well in it. Okay, so you have to provide the results by 1st of April, which means you have to have sat the test before, way before 1st of April. Uh, we'll see uh, exactly when from, from Swapnil, but probably it'll be at least two weeks before that you should, you should sit the test to make sure you have your results by 1st of April. If you can't provide it by then, you fail the admissions process. We score you as a zero because um, you haven't provided the paper that's, that's required to get you uh, past the minimum points. Okay, and then you can see the rest of the process here. I'm not going to go into it today, uh, but the, the slides will remain available. For self-funded, there's a bit more time. Self-funded international, so applicants have or potential applicants still have until the 30th of April to make an application through our system called Dream Apply. And uh, you actually have until this date to provide your NMAT exam. Yeah, so you have until the 30th of April. Make sure, again, that you've sat the test at least two weeks before. The last uh, process, the third one on the screen, is for the Hungarian applicants. So you can see uh, that, that, that you should apply through Felby by the 15th of February. And you have quite a lot more time, actually, have until the 10th of July to, to provide the MMAT paper, if that's, that's the paper you choose to sit. And uh, you'll get your final results, your final point scores on the 24th of July and find out if you've got a place at Corvinus then. Okay, so there's different deadlines for different people, different uh, groups of applicants. And I've already mentioned both tips. So last, lastly from me, some extra um, opportunity of preparation. So. Swapnil is going to give a lot of technical details, general advice, but she's not going to be going through practice questions in, in the MMAT today. But we are offering some sessions. So for people that are in Budapest, you'll be able to take advantage of this. For people that are not, we're going to record all the sessions and then the recordings can be available to you as well. Possibly there'll, there'll even be a live uh, option to join live. So there'll be four sessions in March. I think that these could be six to 90 minutes is, is to be de determined and I think it could be held over four weeks in March so one session each week and uh, the dates to be confirmed but it will be at Corvinus in March and uh, we'll be announcing this in the event section of our website uh, and also on social media so do uh, do come and attend if you're in Budapest and if you're not keep an eye out for these recordings that would be really useful for you to, to attend. Obviously, I'd uh, be two Corvinus academics leading those sessions and uh, working through practice questions for you. So I think that's a fantastic opportunity we only offer for the for the NMAP paper. That was all from me. I'll be back to, to answer questions soon. So next is over to my colleague Swapnil from, from NMAT. Over to you, Swapnil. Or Timmy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Matt, for your uh, presentation. And uh, now please swap, Neil. Tell us everything we need to know about the NMAT exam itself. Thank you, Timmy. Um, good morning, good afternoon. Good evening, even some people, if they are attending this session from a different part of the world. Uh, as Matt mentioned in his presentation that uh, there is, there are deadlines, different deadlines for a different set of uh, students to apply in Corvinus University. Cor in that case, you have to prepare and you have to appear for the exam accordingly. Some may have the deadline of 1st April, some 30th April, and some, um, you know, in, in end of July. So, uh, in my session, I will be talking about the NMAT exam uh 
and why I will be talking about NMAT exam, as uh, Matt has given you already the briefing that NMAT, GMAT, or GRE exam is required to take by international uh, candidates uh, if you want to take admission in uh, the number of degrees from Corvinus University. And he mentioned very clearly that the candidates who are passing from Corvinus University, how well they are doing in their life uh, after seven years. So that is the data. Definitely, they, they he has done that uh, analysis and showing you, and he showed you in into the presentation. So before, uh, so let's start uh, and understand that what is NMAT exam and why NMAT exam. What are the sections of this NMAT exam and how you can, uh, in, in today's session, you will understand that, okay, what all you need to prepare to give this NMAT exam. So uh, let me just brief you about NMAT exam. So uh, NMAT uh, at present, the presence of this exam is in uh, many countries, including Hungary, Philippines, South Africa, Nigeria, Morocco, and India. 77 business schools, top business schools, they are accepting and met exam scores to give the candidates uh, admission into their business schools for doing MBA. So this is one of the most, you can say, most sought after graduate management education entrance exam and taken by almost 75,000 candidates every year. So what is there and why, uh, how you can, you know, leverage this exam to uh, get entry into the Corpus University? Uh, in uh, This is called one of the, uh, you know, very much candidate friendly MBA entrance exam which brings much more convenience and the flexibility to the candidate. How? See, when you give exam, the exam is online uh, for international students, online proctored at home. Why we call it online proctored at home? Uh, because you have to sit in one corner of your home closed environment, closed room where no one is coming or disturbing you. And when you are appearing for the exam, the moment you submit, you, the, you know, after completing the exam, when you click on the submit button, you will be able to see the score report, unofficial score report immediately on your screen that how much I have scored. You will be able to download the scoreboard in... Uh, uh, scorecard in next 48 hours provided there is uh, no flag raised by the proctor or although you will be giving the exam online but there is always a proctor who is checking that uh, what are you doing while you're sitting in front of your laptop or computer so if there is no flag raised there is no concerns raised by the proctor your score will be released in next 48 hours and you will be able to download it. Uh, in any uh, cycle, in any testing cycle or within a one year of, uh, you can say, uh, one year of the testing cycle, candidate, they have been given, candidate, we, we are giving them three attempts to improve the score. Okay, suppose you have registered for the exam on 25th of February and you schedule, you schedule the exam for 28th of February. You have given the exam on 28th of February, but then you realize, oh, my score is not, you know, not making the cutoff, which is required for Corvinus. In that case, you can appear again in the month of March. You prepare well, and again, you prepare for two weeks or one week, whatever time you want to give for your preparation or wherever is gap you are feeling, then you again appear. So maximum three attempts you can take for the uh, within one uh, testing cycle for NMAT. You can, while you are filling up the, uh, the application, at that time, uh, you uh, can choose multiple schools where you can send the scores. So uh, there are five scores at, until up till five, uh, five schools. Uh, 
you can send it free of cost and after five schools if you want to send it to the sixth school also the score then there are charges for them and when we say it, it enables your best performance because the weightage has been given equally to each section there are three section in that for international candidates there are the, the questions are 10% lesser uh, comparative to the when the exam has been conducted in india while you are taking your exam you can play to your strengths it means that there are three sections before starting the exam you can choose which section i want to finish first so you can you know organize the section in the order you can choose and create the section order suppose you are very good in quantitative skills and you want to appear in quantitative skill section first so you select that as a first section logical reasoning second and the language third it depends which one is your strength or which one which section you want to appear in which uh, uh, order so you can play to your strength there are uh, there is a, a six week study plan which is uh, hosted on the website and met website you can go through that plan and accordingly you can start your preparation with, uh, with the help of that study plan uh, and there are official guide there is an official guide which is available online you can purchase it you uh, you can map your six weeks uh, plan along with your official guide and start preparing accordingly before giving your uh, final exam main exam you can appear into the prep exam as well two attempts uh, are available free of cost for appearing in, into the prep exam there are uh, two more attempts uh, uh, which are available uh, for nmat before you are appearing for the main exam but they are uh, you have to pay the money for that and then you can appear in them as well so before coming and giving your main exam there are multiple attempts which you can give and you can understand where what which area which section is your strength and which section is your weakness and it gives you the flexibility to sit and in a relaxed mode and appear for the exam at your place at your home as i told you that uh, in nmat exam there are three sections so each section has 36 questions although time given to each section is different quantitative skills the time has been given for 52 minutes because there are although number of questions are same but more calculation is required in quantitative skills section the language has been given 28 minutes the logical reasoning has been given 40 minutes minimum marks for each section is 12 and the maximum marks some any any candidate in any of the section can score is 120 so total 108 questions will be coming on the screen and there are two hours which total is two hours given to the candidate to appear for the exam and out of this 360 you have to score 165 minimum to get into Corvinus and uh, it's not that if suppose you have completed your quantitative skills section in 45 minutes so remaining seven minutes will not get added to the another section this 52 minutes time is given only for quant if you have finished it earlier your next section will start but the time which you have saved here will not get added to the next section okay so what all uh, 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 topics you which you need to prepare yourself is like in quant uh, you need to prepare number properties arithmetic algebra and probability di caselets and tables di graphs and charts and data sufficiency similarly in language skills you have to prepare 
reading comprehension, paraforming, error identification, preposition, sentence completion, and analogies. In logical reasoning, you have to prepare for critical reasoning, analytical puzzles, deduction, and other reasoning. There might be a question in your mind, why do I need to prepare for these topics? Because these topics have been chosen and the exam has been crafted uh, with the help of a big psychometrician team. They have mapped the business management school's requirement and the subjects which can any, any student they learn in, in the business management school. So, and then they have mapped these topics back because you will be required, although the subjects will be different in the business management school, but if you have the, uh, you know, ability to clear or uh, perform well in these kind of topics and the questions, then you, uh, you, there are more and more and very clearly that you will be able to do well in your uh, management studies. Because you will require English. Yes, you will require English. You will require uh, reading comprehension. You will require preposition, error identification. Because when you are completing your business management education, you when you will be working in a corporate environment, at that time, you need to write letters. You need to send memos. You need to uh, uh, submit the white papers. And obviously, there will be a, so much of data in front of you. You need to do the analyze. You need to do the analysis of that data, and then only you can, you know, start your um, you start performing it in your day to day work. So the questions or the test or the exam has been the structure of the exam has been designed to meet the requirement of the business management schools for MBA so that you can perform well there in the subjects which you will be studying there. Okay. Uh, one thing which I would like to make clear over here is to register for NMAT exam. There is a separate process and to register for Corvinus University, you have to go to the Corvinus uh, website and you have to register there. So you have to follow both steps. You have to follow, you have to go to the NMAT website to register for NMAT. However, while you will be registering at that time, you will select Corvinus University so that your scores can go there. But to apply in the Corvinus University, you have to go to the Corvinus website and you have to fill up the application form there. Okay, so uh, what are the steps which you need to follow for registering for NMAT? There is a website, mba.com. Go there. You write on uh, in Google or somewhere you type in the, in the browser. You say mba.com slash NMAT. You will be able to see a screen where one but on the uh, on the top of this on the banner you will be uh, you will see one button which will say register for nmat by gmac when you will when you click on that button then there will be a small form come uh, it will appear in front of you uh, there will be some four fields you need to enter your uh, first name last name your email id and uh, once you will uh, submit then, because you want to give NMAT, in that case, you have to complete your NMAT profile by uh, selecting the country where you want to take the test and your mobile number. The moment you will, you are filling up this information, uh, one verification email will be sent to the email ID which you have given uh, while filling up the four fields. You have to go to your email. Open this uh, email which you will be receiving from uh, NMAT. You click on the verification email button, verify your email, and then uh, uh, you will a page will open in front of you which will, which will be saying that cl click on NMAT by GMAT uh, NMAT by GMAT dashboard. Just click there. It will directly take you to the dash dashboard where your application form will start, which will uh, the application form will ask 
all your personal details, your educational details, if you have any work experience, the work experience detail, your and it will ask the questions uh, like uh, which government ID you will be using because you have to show that government ID to the proctor when you will start the exam. Okay. So all those details you need to fill up. Then you have to schedule the exam for which date when you will click on the schedule button, you will be able to see the calendar kind of a situation where you can choose the date and the time and uh, that uh, your that slot will be given to you and you make the payment and then you can appear for the exam. So as I told you, you fill up your application and after that you can schedule the exam. You have to click on again mba.com account because you have already created an account with the by using your email ID. So you log in there click on my account page click on book exam button and it will it will redirect you to the scheduling system your details will be visible over there select the date and the correct time zone please please ensure you are selecting if you are giving it from hungary then select the hungary time zone if you are giving it from some another country select your country and that time zone where you want to uh, uh, select the appropriate time of your country from where you are appearing in the exam because the begin test button will be unable at the time chosen by you for that country then there is one option which we call exam show as i told you you should you have to upload uh, the your photo identity proof which is given by the government on the website then exam you know in exam you know there are three security questions have been asked from the candidates and you have to give the answer of these three security questions why these three security because while you will when the day when you will be appearing for exam one of these three questions one question will appear to you uh, on your screen as in a security question and your answer should match then exam key where uh, the system asks you to enter your first name last name and re-enter the first name last name without any space because system captures your uh, how, you know typing speed and uh, the keys which you are entering over there then after scheduling your exam you will get an <coughs> confirmation email plus from the dashboard, you will be able to download the uh, your uh, admit card, which will be giving you all the details. Okay, one very important thing. Although you will be preparing for NMAT by GMAT exam with the help of either official guide or unofficial guide or you, from your own source of things, and you will be appearing for the prep test, free test also, and you can make the payment and then... Uh, appear for the prep test but before your main exam please this is a humble request please go to the website even on the on your uh, this um, uh, account uh, page on your uh, th there is an option given demo test for online mode system check please click there and check whether your system is compatible for the secure browser which where NMAT exam will be running. You have to, you should take this step. Uh, we are not making it mandatory, but if there will be any systemic issue or challenge, do it at least 10, 15 days prior to your exam. If in case you are facing any challenge, you can write to our uh, customer care cell and they will try to resolve the issue. So this, this, system check checks whether you are having an appropriate internet speed whether your system is compatible to the secure browser or not all those things this is very very important step all right as i told you i'll not go in this detail uh, okay what before once you have registered you have scheduled your exam before the exam you should log in 15 minutes prior to your exam you should have your ids handy with you so that you can you know show uh, to the proctor, proctor the uh, the ids you have to uh, 
click your photograph from your mobile phone you have to up upload it or from the help of your laptop camera and you have to upload it your signature also you have to do on a paper and upload it so and then proctor will check all the details proctor will do the room pan 360 degree room pan that that room is a closed room there is no one in the proximity the table or the desk is clear and once the proctor feels okay everything is fine then the proctor will start the exam which will install a software uh, as i told you a secure browser and that that secure browser will be one one window you can say where the exam will be running and proctor will be there uh, proctor will not be visible to you on your screen but proctor is watching you while you are giving your exam so uh, for th this year uh, date still uh, june we are having the last delivery will be happening on uh, 30th of june uh, but for various uh, categories of the candidates as, as matt uh, in his presentation matt has said that there are some people have to submit the scores by 1st april some by 30th april and some by 30th july so i i would request you to please uh, book your exam, take your exam, and submit your results as per your deadlines. From uh, 1st July till 12th of July, there will be no exam conducted. And it's not that every day we are conducting the exam. When you will go at, for scheduling the exam, you will be able to see uh, in every month there are few dates and few slots have been given, given over there. As I said, that if in case you are not scoring well in your first attempt, there is a chance given maximum total three attempts you can take it within one cycle. And uh, you should be, uh, after first attempt, take few days, you know, gap, prepare well, and then appear for the retake. Uh, as I uh, uh, told you in the, in the beginning itself, that school application process and NMET by GMAC exam registration they both are two separate steps do not mix them at all okay the, what is the fee for this test the test registration fee is uh, us dollar 65 plus the applicable taxes again if you are appearing again in the test that okay i have not scored well let me appear again then the retake is costing the same as I told you, you can send till five schools. You can send your scores. Those five schools which where NMAT exam is, they are accepting the NMAT exam for their uh, admission uh, for their business management programs. Uh, then till five, it is free. But beyond five, it is US dollar five per score report plus the Texas. If suppose you have scheduled your test, as I have given you the example for 28th of February, but suddenly on 25th, you realize, no, I cannot appear for on this date. Then what should I do? I will be losing all my money. No, you can reschedule the exam, but there is a reschedule fee. And rescheduling can be done 72 hours prior to your test. So it's not that same day you can reschedule, no you have to do the rescheduling 72 hours prior to your test time. So you please ensure, please take care of that. What resources we are providing you uh, to prepare? As I told you, there is an exclusive study plan, which is for six weeks, which is available on our website. Go there, download, prepare yourself as per the study plan. There is an official and met official guide which is available for international uh, candidates in the form of ebook. You can go to Amazon and you can buy that ebook from there. One free exam prep with two attempts means uh, you can appear twice to check whether, free of cost, uh, whether I am scoring well or not. If you have exhausted these this free attempt, there are two paid prep exam as well. And each one has two attempts. That means before giving your main attempt, you can at least give six times 
you can appear for the ex uh, uh, prep exam and you can prepare well. As I told you, that ebook available on Kindle or Amazon, you can buy. And every year, uh, every second year, we keep changing the questions in, in, in the uh, official guide. Some questions we keep retiring, some new questions keep adding. So right now, with the one which is available in the market, it is having 264 questions from past NMED by GMAC exam. These questions will not be coming in your exam at all. These are from past and we have retired those questions, but they will help you because the official guide gives you the question, the answer, explanation, and the tricks and the tr uh, tips to crack these kind of questions. So, and 475 additional questions with answer keys and explanations. So every question has been given uh, with, with explanation that how you can, you know, solve this kind of question. So with this, I would like to thank each one of you. If you have any questions, please raise. I'm available uh, to give all the answers and handing over the baton back. Thank you so much, Swapnil. Um, now I would like to invite Matt back to our virtual roundtable and also invite uh, Sara Strafino, the Director of Market Development at uh, GMAC, to look at some questions. Now we're finding Matt, yes. Um, now the first uh, very important question is, um, it says, I tried to buy the NMET official guide to make the preparation easier. However, I am struggling to find a retailer who ships to Europe. Could you please recommend one? Okay. So what I am trying to understand here that you are you are trying to buy a book, hard paper book, right? Because e, uh, Kindle versions are available, but paper book is not available there. Although uh, we are talking to our uh, publisher and I yesterday also and day before yesterday again I, I was in the talk with the publisher that how they can make the paper book available in Hungary I'm still in the talk with them I'm supposed to get uh, by tomorrow I should get some answer from them they so they are having some vendor who will tie up with the bookshops and then they will you know, ship the these hard copies of the official guide to those bookshops so that from there you can uh, you can approach to those bookshops and then you can buy. How you will get to know which books, uh, which which seller is actually providing you the official guide in Hungary? That information, uh, yes, this is something which uh, uh, Sara, we, we I will pass it to you and then we need to you know. We will we share. Have with to the pass it to the candidates, right? Mm -hmm. Somehow. Yeah, and I also suggest uh, that you know we send uh, Matt and Timmy uh, a link uh, to the uh, ebook, um, so they can find the direct uh, link to um, download the uh, official Nmat uh, guide in ebook uh, version. Perfect. I'll do that. Okay. Thank you so link much for your answer. Timmy, and, just one uh, second. I wanted to ask uh, Sarah and um, Swapno about the cost because I saw there were some questions about this as well. So for the for the ebook, is there a cost? I think there is. Uh, how, how much is it? Can you say? Yeah, it is around fifteen dollar. Okay, and uh, if the hard copy is available in Hungary, how much would it cost? I think same. Okay. Okay. Great. Because I saw a lot of people asking this one. Yeah, and that's a great question, Matt. So yes, it's you know the physical books will be around the same price. Just uh, um, always consider though that sometimes the price may be a little bit different if uh, uh, there are taxes uh, that yes. apply. And this was the case, you know, when uh, Swapnil uh, earlier on was talking about the cost of. Uh, the exam and you know you saw in the slide the plus uh, applicable uh, taxes it's the same for the nmat or any other exam some uh, um, 
countries uh, have uh, particular taxes on uh, uh, on the books or on the exams so obviously we comply with the uh, uh, you know national and and government legislations on on that Thank you so much. Now uh, you can already see the next question. Uh, when will we pass these exams? After accepted in a stipendium Hungaricum or before? Matt, it's a... That is a Matt question, question, isn't it? Yeah, I'll give the answer. Uh, well, it was in the schedule. So if you're a stipendium Hungaricum applicant, you need to provide by the 1st of April. Um, maybe what you're asking about is before you're nominated or not. And, and I said that the nominations could be by March. So you don't need to, to pass the exam until after being nominated, but you do need to start preparing before because it, it couldn't be a six week period as you, if you, you've seen. Uh, so I don't think I can say any clearer than that. You need to be ready for 1st of April with the results. You need to start preparing before. You probably would be nominated by March. That's the answer. Yes, yes, uh, thank you so much. Now, next, next question. I would like to know if I'll be exempted from uh, the NMAT if I have completed my bachelor degree in English and I am from a country where English is the official language. No, uh, the NMAT isn't an alternative to English language proficiency. I did say that uh, we don't ask for any additional English language proficiency, but you shouldn't think of the NMAT, the GMAT, the GRE as an alternative to IELTS or TOEFL or TOEIC. Swapnil talked through the, the different areas. So there's no quantitative element to an English language paper, for example. Uh, so you have to do this. I also did, I don't know when the comment was made, but I did also talk through the exemptions and it's very, very clear that 99.9% .9 I said of, P of applicants will not be exempt from having to take this exam so you'll you'll definitely have to do it it's not just because of uh, English language and a bachelor degree in English and Matt if I can add uh, quickly something I know that you know some of the students will feel like oh no an, you know an, an exam and uh, of course uh, none of li of us would like to take exams for for the sake of it uh, so the and in your uh, in initial overview of, uh, you know, Corvinus, you, you said very clearly why, you know, they need to take these exams. I would like just to repeat again, you know, some of those concepts because I, I was an admissions coach and admissions advisor. Uh, when you see uh, an exam, you can absolutely be sure that the school is being very careful about the quality uh, of the candidates uh, that they will put through the program. So when you are in a class, you know, you will be with absolutely outstanding people. Those people will be you know, your network. So you have the certainty you know, that you are with the successful people. They will go on and get successful jobs uh, and they will help your uh, uh, career as well. Also, when uh, you uh, do through the preparation for these exams and they know, you know, it's preparation, it's, you know, time that you need to, to spend it into it. But if you look at it in a positive way, they will help you tremendously once you, you get on, on the program because you will be able to go through the modules, through the um, academic uh, work much uh, more easily. So just consider this as a workout for, uh, for the brain. You also probably are studying <laughs> somewhere at university. This is another exam is different from uh, some of uh, the exams that you may have done but it's absolutely doable. So, you know, don't worry, focus on your preparation, take it seriously, be consistent and you'll be absolutely fine. Thank you so much for the answer uh, to both of you. And, and now you can see that the next question is a, a really complex one. So let's start with the question, uh, what are the differences between GMAT and NMAT exams? And Swapnil, okay. would you like to start and then uh, I may add or vice versa? How would you like to, to take all that? Okay, start, not an issue. You start. Yeah. So again, uh, as uh, a, an advisor, you know, I would say yeah, the exams are uh, different. You may have uh, seen the, the previous web webinar on uh, the, the NMAT. So it's different formats. 
uh, some of the skills may be similar skills uh, that both exams uh, test, but then the, the type of questions, uh, the, the way you work through the questions, the format are very different. So the you know, just to familiarize with the one and, uh, and the other, the best thing that you can do is go on our website, you know, look uh, through the uh, sample questions, uh, the, the materials, just to get a feel, you know, of what uh, the exam content uh, uh, is. Uh, then what um, what is the most suitable exams? Well, those the question, it, it depends on your circumstances. So where you are based and uh, what uh, you have access uh, to. Uh, if you want to take it in a test center, uh, for example, very likely, you know, there will be the GMAT. You know, if you, if you don't want to take it uh, online, you have uh, a test center that will be uh, the, the GMAT option. And then your circumstances, because it, it depends on what you feel more comfortable with. Matt said earlier, you know, at the beginning, I recommend the, the end mat because the pricing point is certainly more uh, uh, accessible and there may be a consideration pricing point for the exams, the retake, the materials, you know, that you have to, to study. So there, there are a number of uh, uh, considerations uh, that uh, you uh, you make in terms of the preparation and the platforms. Uh, you really need to make sure that you study from the official materials because those are uh, written in the language of the exams. Swapnil was saying earlier, you know, there are questions that were in the exams. We publish and we refresh the, the materials every now and then. Um, so uh, any of the exams that you decided to, to take in any format, always uh, ensure that you start with the NMAT or the um, GMAT official preparation resources. And would you like to add anything to, to that uh, swap name? Yeah, so I, I will just say that if you want to know about more uh, the details about the GMAT and NMAT, then uh, go to mba.com slash exams. You will on that that page. You will be able to see all the three assessments provided by GMAT, the GMAT and MAT EA, and you will able be able to understand the difference in GMAT and NMAT. There are few topics which are in one exam and it's not in another exam, or the similar topics, but the way that we are putting the questions, they are in, in a different style. And now GMAT Focus Edition is. Uh, applicable the the previous edition is going to uh, we are just closing it down and it is about to sunset the sunset date is approaching for that yeah in terms of length of the exam is you yeah. know roughly the, the same uh, the gmat focus edition and the nmat are you know yeah. roughly well two hour two hour you know something but again uh, uh it's the format, you know, the question types, just to focus on understanding, you know, the key differences between the uh, question types, the format, the content that is behind the, the exam. Uh, thank you so much. And do you have a suggestion that uh, which uh, exam is uh, more suitable for uh, an international student living, living in uh, Southeast Asia? Because this is the... Uh, next part of the question. Oh, sorry, I missed that. See, uh, even both exams, GMAT or NMAT, they both are suitable for any any part of the globe, for that matter. But there are certain schools which are accepting NMAT, and GMAT definitely are larger a larger number of schools and more uh, acceptable by more and more uh, uh, schools in a different continents. You know. So it all depends which school you want to study, where, where you want to study, where, in which country you want to study. And then accordingly, you select the exam and you give the uh, you take the exam. But uh, uh, when he says that South Asia, Southeast Asia, so uh, I, I'm just assuming definitely he's having or he or she will be having the you know accessibility to the Internet. And first of all, it, uh, there is one point which we harped on too much it is like six weeks study but not necessary everybody may not be able to prepare within six weeks you may need more time you may not need more than two weeks it all depends at which level you are six weeks is something a uh, generic a uh, general guidelines but you may need two months 
so if i don't know what is your preparation level mm -hmm. how much you uh, you are prepared to appear for these kinds of uh, exams so i would request you please browse the website you will be able to find out all kind of information over there everything uh, even the rules regulations policies everything you will be able to figure out for gmat as well as for nmat and then give the free test and uh, figure out whether there are sample tests also would, would uh, will be available some questions will be available so just try okay which one where which topics i am more comfortable with which exam i i would like to give because each exam has its own uh, you know reach and uh, acceptability uh, from the different business schools okay thank you so much then uh, this uh, question is covered um i think we have time for one or two more questions um next question is uh is it compulsory for a candidate to take both uh, the GMAT and NMAT uh, respectively? I can answer it. As, as the, I think everybody can answer this question. Um, probably a lot of the attendees can answer this one now. So you, you don't have to do both. You should pick one of, of the two. Uh, that was what the last question was about. So please save your money, focus on preparing for one of the two exams and, and definitely don't. The opposite of compulsory, don't take both of them. Uh, take take either one or the other. Okay, thank you so much. Then uh, this was uh, all that can fit into uh, today's uh, webinar. And uh, thank you so much for all of you uh, to the answering and the presentations and uh, to any anyone here who will be taking the NMAT exam. We wish you the best of luck and uh, have the nicest day. Thank you, Tini. Thank, so Thank you, Matt. Mm -hmm. Thank you for Thank having you. us. Bye. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye.